Hey guys, my name's Edwin Evers, and I'm super fortunate that I've been able to fish for the last 20 years. And, you know, we're out here, it's pre-spawn, the first of March, and I kind of want to give you a little bit of what goes through my brain when I'm thinking about pre-spawn. You know, just pre-spawn 101, basics generally, what I look for, and you know, kind of what has worked for me over the last 20 years. So hopefully we can catch a few fish, hopefully you know, we can get it all figured out today. You know, that's one thing about pre-spawn, they change weekly, daily, and even hourly. So always keep that in mind. So here we are in Northeast Oklahoma, just on a, you know, man-made reservoir. The, the water's down a little bit full of rocks. Uh, there's no smallmouth in this lake to speak of. I think there's spotted bass and largemouth, but you know, it's really late winter. Maybe you could consider it early spring, I guess. Uh, water temperatures in the upper 40s. Fairly, I would say this is fairly clean water. A lot of people may say this is stained depending on, on where you're from, you know, in the country, but you know, for Oklahoma standards, you know, I can see that bait. Oh, I can see it down there and it's not sunny right now, you know, so I can see it 20 inches, so that's pretty clean. Uh, I'm just gonna start throwing a crankbait, a little flat-sided crankbait. You know, this is a, a really subtle bait. It's a great wintertime crankbait, you know. It's, the water's in the 40s, but I still think we'll catch some fish on a crankbait. It's just, I, it's my go-to bait. It's a bait I can cover a lot of water with. You know, something else that may come into play would be a jerk bait today or, or if we have to slow down and throw a jig a little bit. But, uh, you know, I started at the mouth of this creek here and I'm just gonna work my way back and see if the water color changes any, see if the water temperature changes any, and, and you know, see if we get any bites, see, see what portion of the creek they're in. You know, basically, if I can find these three or four things, I'm gonna have more success. One of them, in my mind, is I've got to have clean water. You know, it, it, it just makes it 10 times easier in cold water, pre-spawn, if my water's clean, you know? So if I'm at a lake, that may mean going down closer to the dam. That may mean going where uh, a creek's running in that runs clear all the time. Uh, that may mean in a pond, you know, sometimes in a pond, the side that's more protected or up in a little neck doesn't have wind that generates turbidity. That's kind of a hard word for me to say. So I'm always going to be looking for clean water. You know, so right here, we've got, in my mind, clean water. You know, clean water is relative to where you live. You know, if, if, if I was, let's say at the Great Lakes, you know, this is not clean water by any means. But here in Oklahoma, this is clean water, you know, and I can see 18 to 20 inches down. So that to me is clean water. There's one. I paused it. That's when he ate it. That fish was shallow. Just a little one. Come here, buddy. First fish of the day. He's got hit by a bird, too. You can see that right there? See that mark? You can see that's where a blue heron hit that fish, thinking it was a small bait fish. You know, he that's a scar from a blue heron. He's like, man, I'm glad I escaped that. That big ugly bird. I think these are always the best days when you're on a, a body of water that it's not too crowded. You know, there's not a big 100 boat tournament going on. Don't have all the other competitors out. You know, these are the days that, that you, you long for, these days that you're just out kind of fun fishing, enjoying the day, enjoying the, the, the peace and the quiet and nature and seeing deer. Look at that big eagle. See that eagle? Ball, you know, that, that was a young one. It's, it's a bald eagle. There's a bear in there. It's hibernating. <laughs> There's a fish. And right when I paused it, long and skinny. Hmm. At least eating it good. That may not be big, but they're eating it good. I think it's really important when you're fishing a steep bank like this 
you know, when you're trying to figure out the bites to parallel that bank. I mean, it just doesn't make any sense at all to sit out and cast, you know, towards it. It's really hard to uh, do if you got people in the back of the boat fishing, but if you're by yourself and you can get up here and 45 it, you know, it just, your bait is in the strike zone so much longer and you just cover so much more water more efficiently getting up on that bank and throwing down it. I always kind of laugh, you know, people always think, man, I gotta have a boat, I gotta have a boat, I gotta have a boat to, to, to fish. And man, I, I have a boat and I'm fishing the bank. So, you know, a guy that's standing on the bank, he's right where he needs to be. He just needs to throw parallel to the bank. You know, it's everybody that, that, that's on the bank always thinks they need to have a boat. Heck, we're gonna catch, every fish we're gonna catch today is gonna be within a cast of the bank, I can promise you. You know, right now I'm trying to really kind of determine what these fish are relating to and what the strike zone is. But, you know, with the bait that I'm using, this bait's only gonna get to five feet on this 10 pound test. So I've got to at least fish five feet or less. You know, I feel like I need to be making contact with the, with the bottom. Uh, you know, we just gotta determine the strike zone. Or the, I always like to start shallow and then work my way deeper. Even in the winter time like this, I just so many times when I go the other direction, if you don't start shallow and work deep, you'll just miss them. And, and I just, I'd much rather start shallow and then go deep. I just, generally I find them shallower than I, I think they should be or, or, or are. There's one. Man, I popped it right off that tree or log, whatever it was, and that's when he ate it. Cannot get. Oh, that's a good one too. Golly. He has got it choked. Look at that fish. Come here, buddy. Man, I cannot believe how shallow these fish are. I mean, this goes to show we got. Oh man. Come on, get a. Come on, get a thumb full of hooks. That's a good one. Look at that, I just, those red, I just can't get over how red their mouths are in this cold water. It's a good example right there not to give up when you get snagged. I mean, I was, I was definitely hung up on a rock and I just kind of kept popping it and popping it and popping it. What a nice fish, but you know, I just caught that on that, you know, that Berkeley Fritz side. This is a brand new bait. I, I love throwing red, you know, when I, do seminars all across the country. I tell people bass eat three things. They eat shad, they eat crawdads, and they eat bluegills. And I always tend to uh, go on the side of, of crawdads in the wintertime in the spring. That was fun. That's why we come out here. I think a mistake that, that I've made in the past that I've learned through the years, you know, when you're throwing a small crankbait like this, is line size is so critical and it's not necessarily critical as far as fish seeing my line you know it's not why i use little line you know i've got this on 10 pound test and some people might think that's that's light you know when you're fishing shallow anyways it but to me in really cold water and a, and a small crankbait the crankbait performs a lot better on lighter line because it has a lot less restriction coming through the water. Um, you know, if I had this crankbait on, you know, 17 pound or 14 pound fluorocarbon, it has a lot more restriction and it doesn't act the same coming through the water. Such a subtle crankbait, it just performs a lot better on lighter line. Gets it a little bit deeper also, which, which could be a, a, a really key critical component of it. Something I think is very critical when you're throwing a crankbait, especially in the pre-spawn or in cold water situations, is the gear ratio of your reel. It just to me can be overlooked by so many people, you know, I want a slower gear ratio reel when I've got colder water. It just helps slow that bait down that much more. And uh, you know, you don't have to, you know, I guess if, if, if you only had one reel, and let's say it's a seven to one or an eight to one, one way you can combat that is just fill your spool halfway full of line. 
that's going to slow down that gear ratio reel. But uh, the perfect world is to get a five to one or a six to one, something a little bit slower to help slow your bait down. That helps tremendously when the water's cold. You know, a slower gear ratio reel is important. If you think about it, you know, a, a bass is a cold blooded creature. It's, it's, it's not like us where we have a consistent water, you know, body temperature. A bass's body temperature is the same as the water temperature, you know, and it's 47 degrees right now. See, so you got to think about it. He's, he's cold. He's not going to be moving as fast as when a bass is in 90 degree water temperature. So that's why that slower gear ratio reel really helps. It just slows, you know, the, 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 the bass is chasing this, this, this crankbait, you know, thus another minnow or another creature that it's after it helps slow it down that much more, you know, and, and an angler can take a, an eight to one gear ratio reel and possibly slow it down, but you can never slow it down as you would using a slower gear ratio reel. I just, I think it's critical to have a slower gear ratio reel in your arsenal or just fill your reel halfway up with fishing line. That's, that's the cheap man, the poor man's version of a slower gear ratio reel. You know, to me, in my mind, over the, you know, the past 20 years of experience of fishing tournaments all over the country, this pocket right here has everything I'm looking for when I think of pre-spawn 101. You know, right here, you'll notice I've got a big giant rocks, then it changes to pea gravel. So I've got a rock change, really, really key. Right here, I've got two secondary points. You know, this one's kind of flat. This one's a little bit steeper. This is the channel side. But all this happens, it's the very last 20, 25 foot of water before you know, it ends, it gets to shallow water. So you know, the combination of the rock changes, the, the, the points, and then the last deep water in the back of a pocket, I can't say that enough, and it's north facing, right here, it's due north, south, it's gonna be in the sun all day long. I mean, this thing's due north right here, and it's protected. So perfect prime example of everything you want when you're looking for a spot out there on the water for pre-spawn 101. You can see that, you know, this is the last bit of deep water. These are the 20, 25 foot lines. It's right where it ends. You know, you've got a really good secondary point right here, another secondary point right here. You know, this is considered a secondary point. These are all the things that I'm looking for. You can see my, right here on the Navionics, how it all changes. You can see I'm coming up shallow, it's the last little little bit of deep water right before it gets shallow. Everything you want, pre-spawn 101, this is textbook. This is, when you look up the definition in the dictionary, it's gonna have a picture of this pocket right here. There's one. That might be a good one, oh yeah. And that fish was shallow, look at him up there. Wow, 40 degree water. He's just going crazy like that. Oh. He hits in the head. He acts like he's a big one. Oh, it's a nice one. Finally. Got him on really light line. It's a perfect spot when you look at this. You know, it's the last point right in the back of this creek. I mean, it's just a perfect pre-spawn spot for this fish just to sit and get an easy meal. Oh, come here, buddy. Oh. Just a prime example, you know, pre-spawn 101, back point, you know, deep, deep pocket, then it's the very last of the deep water right before it goes shallow. And uh, just cranking a little flat-sided crankbait. Water's in the upper 40s, it's going in a positive direction. And that's what I caught right there. Thank you, girl. Oh, and it jumped too, that's pretty cool. I think it's super critical in your, in, in pre-spawn crankbait fishing, you've got to pause that bait. You know, it's, it's just a, you're, you'll watch me the whole time I'm, I'm reeling, I'm, I'm pausing it. I, I give it a stop. You know, I, I, hit, I hit a rock, I make contact with a log. I'm always pausing that bait. And, and, and the bites that I've had today, they've all been on that pause, but it's just 
so critical to add the pause and, and the hesitation to your retrieve. Uh, a lot of times I like to pull the bait. You'll notice right there, I'll pull that bait and then pause it. And that gives it a, a one or two second pause when I go to reel up that slack. Points are important in bass fishing 365 days a year. There's always going to be bass on points on any given body of water or river or wherever you're at, pond, it doesn't matter. But it's just a, uh, it's an intersection I would, I would best describe it as. You know, when you come up to that busy four-way stop and, and you've got a gas station on all four corners, there's a reason those gas stations are there in a big city because the vehicles have to stop on that, at that intersection. It, it, it makes it an easy access for somebody to come in and buy a pack of gum and a, and a soda and put some gas in their car. A point is the exact same thing. It's, it's a, a, an area where all the other minnows, shad, crawdads, anything, they have to go around or over that point. And uh, it's just a, a great ambush point for, for, a, for a bass to get an easy meal. It's like a convenience store is for us to get something really convenient and quick to eat. Something else I think is very important, you know, when you're out there and, you're, and, and you think pre-spawn's going on and, and uh, you're looking to try to catch, catch a bass, I really like to pay attention to, you know, protected pockets that, that you know, that north wind is protected from that north wind, but almost more importantly, I want a pocket that gets a lot of sunshine, a bank that gets a lot of sunshine. You know, this bank here is a, a, like a, a northeast bank, so it it's, gets a lot of that afternoon sun. I know today we don't have sun, but yesterday it was sunny, and you know, I think these rocks help warm things up, and, and those fish are gonna gravitate to it. That's, that's one thing about it, just don't ever forget, we're dealing with a cold-blooded creature, and he wants to be warm, and I think the sunnier the bank, the more the more time uh, the sun can be on a bank, I think it's going to make it a better bank. There's a fish. That might be a better one. I hope so. I hope so. Man, I paused it. And gave him a time. Oh, it's a big old stick. Look at that. <laughs> I think I had one on and it just come off. That's what happened. I mean, I did. I paused it and everything, and then I had a bite. Don't be laughing. My thinking is, in the in the pre-spawn time of the year, I think bass move vertically, where the rest of the year, I think they move horizontally. So what happens is, you know, the fish move vertically in the water column on a sunny day. They're going to come up, you know, and those are the days when, you know, that Alabama rig and the jerk bait and you know, maybe a lipless crankbait or something really come into play because those fish are suspended. You know, they'll just be suspended, let's say, out off a point or on a channel swing. And then I think on cloudy days, I think the fish hunker down. I think they get on the bottom because they want to be warmer. You know, so the sun's not shining. There's no reason to come up in the water column to the warmth. So the next warmest thing is going to be the rocks or the bottom. And that's, you know, on those days is, you know, I'm gonna throw a crankbait, something that's, that's skipping on the bottom, or I'm gonna throw a jig, or, or uh, you know, it could even still be a jerk bait, but you're gonna be, in my mind, catching a fish that's coming off the bottom to come up and eat that jerk bait. But those are the things I think about, you know, how that fish moves in the water column in the pre-spawn time, I think it's always vertically due to the clouds. Either it's a sunny day or, or a cloudy day, I think he's just going up and down. There's one. That might be a good one. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Look at this one. Golly, that's a big one. <laughs> that's a full grown one. Yes, this is why you go fishing right here. Oh my goodness, girl, come here. Oh man, just the deal. You just got to move around on enough of these secondary points and then you run into something like this. Oh, it's a big one. Oh, please stay on there. It is barely hooked. Oh gosh, come on, come on, come on. Water is so cold. 
I mean, that water's gold. I got gotcha. you. Look at that one. Wow. <laughs> that one's full grown. That's a big one. Yes, 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 yes. So critical, you know, just to parallel that bank. Slow your retrieve down, have the right size line. I got 10 pound test on that. You know, I don't have light line for fish visibility. I have light line to, just for that bait to work properly. It has such a subtle action. To get that subtle action, you got to keep that light line on there. But man, what a fish. That's a lot of fun. Pre-spawn 101. So, you know, it's, it's, it can be a complicated deal, but a lot of times I think we make it too complicated. But just to, to, to recap a little bit, what I do, you know, over the last 20 years or what I've learned is one, I wanna to try to find the cleanest water I can when the water's cold. You know, the colder that water is, I want it to be cleaner. And a lot of times that's gonna be down towards the dam or that may be in a protected pocket where the wind doesn't have it all turned up. Uh, you know, two, I wanna find banks that the sun really hits hard. You know, especially in the afternoon, that's going to be a little bit warmer. I want to find a lot of times steeper 45 degree secondary points, just like this one right here, just like where that big fish came. I want to parallel those banks. You know, if you're fishing from the bank, it's perfect because you can walk down the bank, throw one in front of you. You know, if you're in a boat, get up on that bank, you know, make long casts, bring it down the, the, the sides, you know, keep your bait in the strike zone. You know, water's in the upper 40s today. I'm throwing 10 pound test. I think that's a critical component because it lets that bait have its action. You know, this is a very subtle crankbait, you know, being a flat sided crankbait like this, if I put too big a line on it, the line overpowers the bait. I need the bait to be the power mechanism, not the line. Uh, a moderate action rod, you know, this is a Bass Pro rod that, it, that is not very stiff. You know, so many of those bites are so subtle in that cold of water. So it's important to have a good rod that's subtle and a slow gear ratio reel. I actually started with my Platinum 6.8 to 1, and then I, I went even slower to my Pro Qualifier 5 to 1 gear ratio reel. That helps me slow that bait down just a little bit more, and I ended up getting more bites once I went to that reel. But in a nutshell, that's Pre-Spawn 101. I know there's hundreds of other things we could talk about. You know, Pre-Spawn is just a huge, massive conglomerate of... Anytime that water temperature starts to climb, in my opinion, it's not necessarily, you know, 50 degrees or it's not necessarily 55 degrees. It's when the water temperature starts to go in a positive direction. And there's so many things more we could talk about, but we just tried to touch on a little bit of it today. And uh, man, I just hope it helps you catch some more fish. I'm going to get back after it.